So I wanted to talk in this lecture about arch and arch modelling in R. So this is one of the things that is perhaps easier to do in eViews, but certainly R is better than some common sense alternatives like SPSS and Excel. In this case, these sorts of arch and arch modelling is easier in R and is indeed impossible in some versions of SPSS. Now what we've got here in terms of arch and arch is a statistical test of some of the volatility clustering that we saw in the last lecture. So we've got some formal statistical techniques to analyse this financial time series data. We don't just have to rely on a time series plot and waving our hands around. Also, I think the subject marks the start of the professional standard analysis of financial time series, and it's important to mention this. Now, these are professional standard models. It's not necessarily the ultimately best way to look at financial time series, but it is the conventionally used approach, so simply too important to ignore. Also, I think this is something that some of my students have used in past dissertation work, so there is real value in studying this topic precisely because you can get up to a essentially professional standard analysis very quickly. So in terms of an overview then, so the subject of arch and arch is a key part of research in finance and accounting and really the main point here is that if you teach this topic to students you can begin to approach a professional standard analysis very quickly so there's a certain sense in which there is value for money in terms of studying the subject. Beyond this there's a cottage industry on time series models in financial econometrics so deeper analyses are possible using, for instance, key concepts from mathematical finance and from statistical physics. Nonetheless, the subject here is important. As I said before, arch Gart models mark the starting point of the professional analysis of financial time series. So this is something you can start to get to grips with very quickly. There's lots of generalizations of these standard arch Gart models. And this is almost a cottage industry in its own right. So you'll see all sorts of different technical names kicking about the place, things like EGARCH, MGARCH, TGARCH, etc. But GARCH is really where the thing really starts. Now these are important things anyway, but certainly the econometric analysis of cryptocurrency data is a live topic of academic research. So what you should see here is that some of the techniques that we talk about in this lecture do actually touch on live academic research themes in finance and it's quite rare to be so close to the cutting edge of financial research on a module such as this. So in terms of motivation then, in the last lecture we saw that typically in financial time series the volatility is not constant. So market returns tend to cluster into periods of extreme volatility and more tranquil periods. Now you can see this graphically and what these arch Gartz models are trying to do is summarise this same observation but in a formal statistical sense. So if we look at uh, some basic plots of financial market data, usually the log returns, what you see is that the market returns show marked differences from simulated returns from mathematical models like the normal random walk. Okay, so and as part of this it's natural to Observe the same phenomena, but just using formal statistical language here, arch and Gartz models, though various extensions are possible. Now, within this, certain observations are important. So all markets, especially the cryptocurrency markets, can show very volatile behaviour. OK, in the midst of the financial crisis on at the moment, this isn't necessarily a difficult thing to believe. Also, though, I think this is a really important point. Volatility in any market will ultimately be more extreme than any mathematical or statistical model used to describe it. And that is especially true for the arch Gartz models that we consider here. So in terms of motivating the subject with empirical market data, what we've got here is a time series plot of Bitcoin returns. And I wanted to just try and go over what the volatility tends to look like for a real financial market. So what you have here is loads of spikes clustered together and this is given the name 
relativity clustering. Okay, so you tend to get relatively tranquil periods and then these spikes where the dramatic market movements happen. And rather than just sort of looking at this graph and waving your hands around and just saying, oh, it clusters together in large spikes, the subject of arch and garch gives you a way of quantifying how these volatility clustering occurs. Okay, so we'll talk about the definition of these arch and garch models in a moment, but essentially what these models allow for is that you can have spikes of volatility that cluster together and low values of volatility that cluster together. Okay, so in some sense, it, these arch garch models do try and give a description of these clusters of spikes and relatively tranquil periods that do occur although there's obviously quite a lot going on in this graph and necessarily arch and garch models will only give a partial description of the price data so if we contrast the market data on the previous slide with the simulation from a normally distributed random walk you can hopefully sort of see marked differences between the two. So for this simulated data, you've got all the data more or less on the same scale. If you look on the previous slide where you've got the actual time series plot of historical Bitcoin returns, you see all sorts of spikes and clustering the spikes. Okay, so it was once described to me like this. So if you look at um, this graph here of simulated data, you can imagine this being like a lawn of grass and then if you look back to the previous slide what you've got in contrast is a sort of combination of grass and trees so on this graph here with simulated data all the observations are on approximately the same scale if you look at the real market data you've got observations that are of different scales some really dramatic spikes and this has been described as the comparison between grass and trees. You know, observations on the previous slide that are completely on a different scale to one another. So this is to reinforce then that real market data will necessarily be more volatile, richer and riskier than any mathematical model used to describe it. So I wanted here to try and go through the R commands that were used to uh, produce this data so in the top of the slide you see some repetition of the things before then you see the differences of the log price so if you look at the line just above the second bullet point we've got here log return the bottom price to the first observation minus the logarithm of the price once you delete the last observation and you need to put what the Last observation is here, it's the minus 2482 observation. And then what we're trying to do here is plot the returns and choose a sensible y axis. So you need to actually do the plot in the first instance this time series here, ts.plot return series. And then at the bottom of the slide, what we've done is repeat this but specify the y limit. Now, the reason for doing this is that I wanted to put both the simulated data and the historical price data on the same y-axis scale so you can see the difference once we choose the y-axis scale to be the same for both okay and the thing to watch for here would be the historical price data would have observations on a different scale the simulated data have observations that are all of size to each other so in terms of the r code for figure two then so if we think about what we're trying to do here, what we want to do is to simulate log returns from the normally distributed random walk model and use the same y-axis to compare this with the historically observed log return series. So the basic message here is that the simulated data from the normally distributed random walk model will necessarily be more uniform, more synthetic, more artificial than the historically observed log return series, which will have observations on a different scale okay so the first thing you need to do is you need the mean of the log return series and then the standard deviation of the log return series and then the basic command for simulating normally distributed random variables is r norm 
the first number here is the number of observations you want to simulate so here this has to be one less than the length of the original price series and then the next number has to be the mean of the log returns the next number has to be the standard deviation of the log returns you then have to specify the y limits for the y axis if you want to here we've chosen the same as before and then what we've done here is choose a sensibly chosen y label just call it the simulated log return so you can call this whatever you like but whimsy isn't a good idea this is usually better when it's so i wanted to just recap then the purpose of arch and garch models so arch and garch models solve the following problem so mathematical models such as the black shoals model often assume that volatility is constant okay so in reality volatility is not constant and market returns can typically be clustered into periods of high volatility a more tranquil low volatility period there's various different names so you might see the term volatility clustering which is what i'm trying to use here you might also see the name long range dependence in volatility so i think that volatility clustering is a slightly better name because it does give you a insight into what these arch and garch models are trying to do now these are necessarily imperfect in any set of financial data especially log returns from financial markets like this will be more complex more complicated richer and riskier than any mathematical model used to describe that but essentially what is happening here is that the arch and garch models give you a way of accounting for volatility clustering because they allow high values of volatility to follow each other and similarly low values of volatility follow each other to also reconstruct at least in part these tranquil periods so as an outline of today's lecture first i first wanted to try and talk about the mathematical formulation of the model and really the point here is to try and pinpoint what precisely arch and garch models do and what they are trying to do here is to account for the fact that you get volatility clustering on real markets into periods of high volatility and periods of low volatility so precisely high periods of volatility can be following each other and low values of volatility can follow each other so you do get at least in part some of the clustering that you observe on real markets i'll then talk about arch and garch modeling in r so the point here is that some of the r syntax is a little bit quirky and this is a little bit out of kilter with the actual mathematical formulation of the model but in a funny kind of way the fact that the presentation in r is so quirky actually makes this thing easier to remember so we can use some of the almost flaws in r to our advantage here and then i'll just give three numerical applications to cryptocurrency price data although you could apply this in principle to any uh, asset price data that you can obtain and so with these numerical examples what i want to emphasize here is we are reaching now the limit of what we can reasonably expect students to do so once we've done the first two bits So in terms of the basic math saying what I wanted to do here is try and compare the Black Shoals model to the simplest Arch 1 model. So the basic idea is Arch 1 is the very simplest consider here. So under the Black Shoals model, the first differences of the log price satisfy this equation here. So they have a normal distribution with some mean and constant variance. Now this model as we've seen is at odds with real market data and it's at odds with real stock market data and also real cryptocurrency market data like we've seen here in this lecture and the idea is that the arch one is a partial fix to this problem so what you have in this case then is that the volatility at time t rather than being equal to sigma squared and just being constant this is equal to alpha naught plus alpha one times u squared t minus one where ut is the residual for the previous time period the difference between the log return and the underlying mean and what this is intended to do is allow for high values of volatility to follow each other and for low values of volatility to follow each other so this is an imperfect mathematical fix 
but it's intended to try and get this basic idea where you get high values of volatility that follow each other on real markets and also low values of volatility that follow each other on real markets.